What you're about to see was completely planned and staged. No Blue Jays were harmed in the making of this video. Welcome back everybody to another episode of The Bedrock Guide. We are not messing around today. We are getting straight into the first goal and that is for us to go find a creeper because we want to give him a hug. No, I'm not joking. We're actually doing this. It's gonna happen. I hear that a lot of creepers have been hanging around Prowl's house, knocking on the doors and such. So we're gonna head over there and see if we can find one. But on the way, we're gonna go check out the resource roulette game because I do feel like Prowl has left us a gift. I don't feel, I know, I watched his video. Look at this, can you believe what he's done here? He owed me 12 iron ingots and he, oh my gosh, Prowl. He tossed them all in here in form of nuggets. It's fine. We're good. We got our 12 ingots. Let's go find that creeper. Hmm. No creepers over here. Just this guy. Okay, we're not doing this here. We're not doing this here. No, 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 no. Come here. Come on, creepy. I think this looks like a good one. Come here, buddy. Ouch. Hey, look at that. We have zero levels now. <laughs> this is good. This is exactly what we wanted. Now, I get to show you guys how this thing works. Again, that was 100% staged on purpose. I would not just throw away 105 levels if it weren't for nothing. So now we have let this sit for hours until all of that fish was gone. All right, so now we've got some salmon preloaded in here. Check it out. We pop this lever really quick. We get two salmon coming into the furnace. Watch what happens when it comes into the furnace. There is a hopper under here that leads into a double chest. It is completely full. So all of these fish are just gonna stay right here. I actually wanna take that one out for a moment because I wanna show you how this works. We're gonna pop that raw salmon back in there. When we take this cooked salmon out, look at this. I've got zero levels on my experience bar. We take this out. Boom, 29 levels with one fish. <laughs> so we're gonna do a few more. All right, we got two. Now here's the trick. With this XP furnace, you have to take one out and then exit the interface and then go back in. Otherwise, it doesn't give you the levels. So here we go. One, two, three, pull. Look, we've got 38. <laughs> oh, this is great. Okay, one more, one more, one more. This one is gonna give us 44 levels. That's fantastic. I need to cook some more fish though, like for real, cause I need something to eat. Again, we've talked about this XP furnace thing a, a few different times over a couple of episodes. We finally have it finished to where I can show you how it works today. But again, don't rely on it. It could be gone tomorrow. This is a bug. It's not always gonna work. And after cooking up that much salmon, we have ended up with 83 levels from zero and honestly i didn't even wait for one by one to come out because i was busy gathering some materials getting ready for the project for today so we probably would have had more close to 105 like we had before uh if we were to just wait there and pick them out one by one but we didn't do that so uh 83 levels that is not bad i have tracked down a spider spawner over in this direction it is not too far away and we are going to make a spider xp farm today. Our house is right over there and this is the block that we're going to dig straight down. Don't worry, I've already been over here. I know what's underneath uh, because I did actually look this up on chunk base before coming over here. I wanted to make sure there were some spawners around and here we go. It's already lit. I've been over here, like I said, and loot. What do we have? Bane of arthropods. That's eh, it'll be fine, but might help us out with what we're going to be building today. We'll actually just go ahead and clear all of this stuff out, take it back over to the house and then get started on the farm. But yeah, if you want to use something like chunk base, it's totally fine. It's a legitimate way to find a farm. But if you want to go for the pure vanilla survival experience, then don't use it. Just try to stumble upon a spawner yourself. And, uh, you know, that'll be the legit way to do it. But because we are creating content, we want to have a way to make this flow seamlessly. I did go ahead and try to find a spawner. There actually are a few around here. There's a zombie spawner. You might be hearing it. It, it is pretty close. 
so there is a zombie spawner. There is a skeleton spawner that Prowl is going to be working on as well. Uh, so we're going to grab this one and see what we can do with it. Some general info about spawners before we get going with this project. If you want to disable a spawner, you just got to place a torch on any side or top of the spawner itself. If we remove this torch, there you go. Spiders are going to start spawning in here. We got to take care of this guy really quick and then light it back up because we don't want mobs spawning in here right now. No spiders just yet. Another way that you can keep this from spawning is if you fill this entire area in with blocks, but I feel like that's a little bit time consuming and kind of pointless when all you got to do is drop a torch, but it is possible if you want to go that route. And blaze and silverfish spawners are slightly different than the regular spider or zombie skeleton varieties, but that's not something we're going to talk about today. We'll get to maybe a blaze spawner sometime later in the season, and we'll talk about those mechanics then. Another thing to note as well is if you've never seen one of these before, do not try to mine it. It cannot be obtained, even with silk touch. If you try to mine it, it's just going to break and you'll ruin the entire thing. If you never plan to use one of these for an XP farm or a loot farm, it's probably okay to break it, but I always leave them just to err on the side of caution in case I ever want to come back to it. So just place the torch, disable it, it won't bother you. These things can be found in dungeons, which we are in one of those right now. They can be found in mine shafts, woodland mansions, strongholds, nether fortresses, bastion remnants, all of those different areas. So let's talk about how this one in particular works. On Bedrock Edition, if you have a spawner, it will spawn mobs in a diagonal pattern, starting four blocks in each direction from the spawner. So let's dig some of this out and I'll show you exactly what we're talking about. I've dug out a square room here with one, two, three, four, blocks of space on each side of the spawner but i did go ahead and put in a little bit of a diamond here just so you can see the visual representation of where spiders can spawn so if you wanted to leave the entire farm as a diamond that's totally fine you can leave it as this shape and dig down but we're going to take all of this out and leave it as a square because I do personally feel like it is easier to get water to flow the direction you want it to when you've got flat surfaces rather than diagonals. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to go ahead and flatten out the ceiling here before we dig down and cover up any holes that might pop through like that from gravel. And we're also going to go ahead and fill in the holes in the walls. So we've got a completely enclosed area. We've got three blocks of air above the spawner, which I think will be fine. And then we'll go ahead and just dig down a little ways. I've dug down a few blocks and I'm gonna go a little bit more, but before I do, I wanna make one minor adjustment. We're gonna put a torch right here and then we're gonna be very careful not to break the spawner itself. We're gonna break that torch. And what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and jump up and place a block here, here, and there. That way we can guarantee that no spiders will spawn above this spawner. They will always spawn to the outsides of the spawner itself. If one happens to land on here, then it could kill the efficiency a little bit and they could get stuck and it's just really frustrating. So to avoid that little pillar on top of the spawner will prevent any spawns on top. Uh, so we have found ourselves running into a bit of a cave, which is actually going to work to our advantage. It's pretty dark in here right now, so I do need to light the place up a little bit. I brought some extra torches with me so that we can do that, uh, but we'll we'll do more thorough lighting a little bit later. Uh, the reason this helps us is because we need to dig down a little bit more, and we don't have much left to dig because it's an open cavern. And there you have it. We have dug all the way down to where we need to be right here at this level. We are nine blocks below the spawner this should guarantee that our spiders get out of spawn radius from the spawner while they're traveling on to the kill chamber so it should increase rates a little bit but we're going to go ahead and fill this floor in and fill in the walls re-enclose this entire square and then we can be on to the next part of the farm okay guys change of plans really quick Oftentimes when I'm doing these kind of projects where there's a lot of grindy work in between, I'm hanging out with Prowl in voice chat and he just gave me the most amazing idea and we're going to take it. He's going to decorate the inside of his spawner and so are we. If you want to see what he's decorating his as, go ahead and check out 
his video. I had kind of an idea for the, the, the kill chamber and storage area, but I wasn't going to do anything in here until he convinced me that it would be a good idea. So yeah, Prowl came up with a really cool idea and we're gonna give him credit for it and put our own little twist idea on this area. So what we're gonna go for is an abandoned mine shaft style. So what I'm thinking is we will link this up with the branch mine at some point and have a mine cart that takes us over here and it'll look all cool and stuff and we'll have an observation area where we can see inside to the spawner. But if we're gonna have that, let's go the extra mile. Let's decorate the inside. So we're gonna do a basic little bit of groundwork here with our slabs. But if you're gonna do the same thing and use slabs, you gotta be careful. You gotta make sure that they are top slabs. If you use bottom slabs, it's gonna, it's gonna ruin the farm. You won't be able to spawn stuff in here. So we're using slabs because it stretches our resources a little bit farther so we don't have to get as many but we should be pretty good to go. Let me get this floor in and we're gonna get some planks and stuff on the walls as well. So it's gonna take a little bit of time to dig this out. I'll be back momentarily and we'll have a totally different looking room when we're done. Well, that looks a lot different than it did before. We've got a few of these missing plank style stairs turned upside down and sideways. We showed you how to do that in the starter house video. So if you wanna learn more about that, go check out that video. Uh, and we also, we've got some fences hanging down from the ceiling making it look like kind of an abandoned mineshaft feel. But truthfully, this is going to be a very low lit area. So most of the surfaces are flat and we don't want anything obstructing the spawns in this room. So we, we kept it minimal. But before we fill in that wall, I want to show you one thing over here. This plank right here represents nine blocks away from the spawner. This should be far enough outside of the spawn radius that any spiders that are over here or farther should not interfere with more spiders being able to spawn in that room. And then this slab back here will represent the final spot that this spawner will remain active. If we go back any farther, let's place one down here, you can see the fire has gone out, the spawner is off, we will no longer get any active spawns in this room if we are past that point. So we're gonna go ahead and leave a wall there so that we don't dig back any further than that. And, and we'll just know in general that this is the area that we have to work with. Another quick update for you guys, I've actually done some recalculating and this spot right here is the magic number because we are not gonna be standing up at this level, we'll be standing right here. So if you see the spawner right there, if we back up anymore, it shuts off as soon as we get off of that block. But as soon as we step back on, spawner is on. So this is our magic spot right here. We don't want to go any further past that. So I think this will probably be the spot where we collect the spiders. I've already got a pathway started for them. And basically all this is going to be is a water stream that continues to carry them over to where we're going to be standing. I am just about ready to finish up this farm and activate it, get it ready to go. So let's talk through what we've got going on here. We've got the spawner up at the top. It's currently deactivated because of the torch. Whenever the spiders begin to drop, they're gonna drop down here and we're gonna place a water stream all the way across this back wall and it will push them forward into a, another water stream that will flow this direction. And as long as we keep them flowing, they shouldn't climb the walls. And even if they do, once they reach the ceiling, they're gonna fall back down. And we've got some slabs here to kind of keep them from going up too high. The traffic flow should be pretty good. Another thing that you should note as well is that spiders cannot climb on ceilings or overhangs. So since this is technically a ceiling right here, if they decide to climb this wall, they're not gonna climb back this way and then on up. They'll just kind of fall back down into the water stream and keep going on their way. So once they hit this water stream, they will come down here and then hit another water stream, which will carry them over to our kill spot. So what we're gonna do here, before we activate this thing, we're gonna go in and grab a double chest. We're gonna place it down here and here. We can still open it because these are under slabs. And then we'll go back here and we will place down a hopper right here. And for good measure, we're gonna place another hopper right there. The water stream should carry all of the items to the end of the row here, so we shouldn't have any misses. Enderman, do we need to go? I recently saw on Twitter that if you stare at an Enderman and don't look away, they won't attack but I'm pretty sure that's a Java only mechanic. Should we test that out? Yep, 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 that's a Java only mechanic. It doesn't work. <laughs> and and I don't know where he went. Oh, we're gonna die. This is gonna be bad. We should not have done that. I think we're good, maybe. Are we good? 
you know what once we start placing water down he's not going to bother us anyway so let's go ahead and put down the water stream and we're going to do what you've seen many 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 times before we're going to make an infinite water source so we'll go here and then we'll go here and then we should just be able to spam this water all the way across and if we turn around we should be able to see that it does stop right at the edge oh no we've miscalculated Ugh. Oh, that's so frustrating. Yeah, that was a big derp moment. Okay, so I've got it fixed. What I did is I elevated the back wall by one block. We've got one block up there and we've got one water stream all the way across the back and that gives us our full length of the room. Water flows, in case you didn't know, eight blocks before it stops. This room is nine blocks wide, so that's why it stopped one shy of the edge. But the rest of this area should be fine because from here to here is eight blocks so the water should flow our spiders should fall and then from here to here is eight blocks so they should stop right here and we can punch 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 and get all of our loot and experience speaking of loot if you don't know spiders do drop string and spider eyes spider eyes are great for potions later in the game but we'll get to that later down the road then we need to go ahead and put another stream right here and right here and as i'm looking at this i may even lower the slabs down a little bit lower let's see how this flows first and then we can make adjustments this isn't too hard to shut back off if we need to i think we're about ready to activate this thing so i have a row of slabs here we're gonna put another one because i want the spiders to go through here and not be able to jump or climb once they get into the final section it'll make it easier for us to pick them off at the end but i think that's about it we're gonna go in here and we're gonna break that torch we're gonna activate the farm and then put these down as quick as possible because we're gonna have spiders just kind of spewing everywhere can i reach that from here nope one more block up here we go three two one activate oh gosh spiders 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 there's only one so far, and that's fine. Let's go ahead and grab our slabs. Boom, 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 boom. And then get in here quick, quick, quick. And oh, oh, oh. We got to take him out. We got to take him out. Boom. But that is a solid demonstration that this thing is up and running. There they go. There they go. There they go. Perfect. Oh, yes, this is great. So then again, these guys should be, well, at least this one and that one that one not quite out of spawn radius yes 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 we're getting more spawns this is perfect amazing let's go ahead and take these guys out and we'll get our experience and we will get our loot and it's flowing in let's check our chest oh perfect we got string and spider eyes coming in this is great if you didn't notice i poked a few pokey holes here just so we can kind of see what's going on if anything looks like it's clogged up which it doesn't look like it all these guys are coming in as they should they're flowing down the water streams now what to do with the rest of this area we are going to make this look like an abandoned mine shaft i am going to put a hole somewhere in this side wall so we can have a little bit of an observation deck in there i want to be able to see what's going on and somewhere back here we're going to have a minecart station that will allow us to ride back to our mine and back to our house area so it's easily accessible from our main house but i don't think we're going to get to the mine cart portion of that today because we do still have to dig out a huge tunnel and i want to get this area decorated and finished up another interesting thing about this farm is that every once in a while you have a chance to spawn a spider jockey if you don't know what that is, a spider jockey is basically a spider that's got a skeleton rider on its back. Now this skeleton seems to have fallen off of his spider and is getting stuck right here at the slab, which is preventing these spiders from coming through. So basically what we need to do is we need to fix this area up so that skeletons can scoot forward just a little farther in case we need them to. There we go. Spiders are flowing again. We're good. I'm just going to clear this set of spiders here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise this up just a smidge to let the spiders come through, even if they have skeletons on them. And that way, if we've got a spider jockey coming in here, oh gosh, this is a disaster. Oh, it's a disaster. <laughs> If we have spider jockeys coming in through here, then they will at least be able to get to this point and we can take them out. And that should be pretty good. And I think maybe we'll just do something like that. 
Yep, everything still seems to be flowing okay. So we've got some backup here. We got a bunch of spiders just hanging out and some hanging out over here. And that's because I haven't really been paying attention to them. I've been messing around with this room a little bit. I've got a basic layout and I want to talk through what we're going to do here before I finish it off. So over here, we've got a staircase that's leading up to what's going to be a platform right here. Haven't finished digging it out yet, but wanted to show you anyway. This is where we are going to put our rail station, which will have a minecart that'll send us all the way back that direction toward our mine and then once we get in here we've got a staircase it's gonna be a two wide it won't be one wide that will lead us down into the spider drop area and then we'll also have another small staircase that leads up just a little bit over here to where we're gonna have an observation deck we can look in on the spiders make sure you know if there's any cloggage happening we can see what's going on and then I think over in this section right here we'll just have a small three by three section of double chests that will allow us to empty this out when it fills up and just kind of store some things over here. None of it's going to be automated. No auto sorting or anything like that. Very, very basic, very simple. But I think I'm going to take a few minutes just to work on this on my own, and then I'll show you what we end up with before we end out the episode. I think we have a spider infestation. <laughs> Look at all these spiders, dude. Oh my gosh. Well, while I was working, I just kind of let this thing run, and apparently we're good on the uh, clearance of the mob cap here. So many spiders, dude. Look at that. Uh, and I also realized when I replaced the, uh, the stone in here with wood, I forgot to cover back up our spawner. So I've had a few spiders kind of land on there and stick there for a little bit. So we're going to fix that. We're going to clear this area out a little bit. So let's check out what we've got for the moment before we clear that out. We've got a little bit of a pathway here up at the top. Stairs that lead over to the observation deck. And we've got what is supposed to be a bit of an abandoned mine shaft with you know, some supports and some cobblestone that's caved in and a little bit of coal there. I think it looks pretty good. We got some stressed wood and we've got pieces missing here and there, like a piece missing there. And then we've got another branch that hasn't been dug yet. And there's a little work light there for the people that are digging the mines out. And if we come down here, this is where our mine cart is going to be. And then we can come on down here and take a look at the little bit of a mess we've got going on down here. This is awesome. So we got some busted out wood, some stressed wood, different things like that the little lanterns i love these lanterns they just provide so much atmosphere guys this is crazy i'm so happy with how this has turned out just one last thing to do we need to go ahead and place in our chests we're gonna put them right here sideways just like so and then we'll get a few more we don't have enough but we'll stack them in here maybe we'll kind of make it look like pieces of the chests are missing as well maybe they won't all be perfect maybe we'll like bust this one out so it's a single chest and then maybe have one sitting like right here oh nope 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 right there just like that we'll, we'll kind of mix it up we'll make it look interesting yep i'm pretty happy with that so that completes this area let's go ahead and clear out these spiders and fix the little piece of wood that needs to go on top of the spawner and while we're doing that maybe we'll go ahead and grab our comment or question of the day so i left the area to go get a book and quill so we could read our comment question of the day and i, I always forget that when you leave mobs despawn fantastic we're gonna have less to clear out now <laughs> So let's go ahead and read our question for the day. It says, dude, you should save the diamond pickaxe for obsidian. Don't use them for mining unless it's your last resort. Use an iron pickaxe instead from Valkyrie. Now, the way I used to play Minecraft, I would say that is probably good advice. But having played over the years, I've started learning a few new tips and tricks. I used to save diamonds without fail i would never use them until i had enchantments but these days i know that i'm gonna be getting enchantments at some point oh my goodness spider don't you do that to me get get out of here get out of here <laughs> Uh, but I know I'm going to be uh, getting enchantments at some point. And so what I normally do now is I use those diamond pickaxes until they are almost broken. And then I save them in a chest. 
because when I finally do get mending, they're gonna be great pickaxes for mining large projects. So we're gonna have several that we can mend up whenever that time comes. So we're not really wasting diamonds, we're just using them early and accumulating more as we can. But in the very next episode, we are going to start working on enchantments for our tools and armor. It won't include mending because we are going to be doing it from an enchanting table and you cannot get mending from an enchanting table. But all of that is for the next episode. If you would like to have your comment read on the comment question of the day in one of the Bedrock Guide episodes, leave those comments now and leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more content like this. That's going to do it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.